Prepare for rivals. Right, blame Elias on the attack, on guard on defense. See, on guard can deliver a strong defense like blame Elias did and manage to at least get the draw out of it. Um, I think they're going to struggle though. Blame Elias with their defense at least was spot on. We'll see what sort of tactics they come up with for the attack. Looks like they're going to have a heavy spawn on the B side as well. Get rid of the gate, maybe the breach. Then move from there. They have a number of javelins out they've got six balls as well man the defender oh, apologies Ugh. the defenders only have four three polax you can definitely see that polax without the um cc immunity rune fallen from grace a lot of people have moved over to maul um i actually played maul yesterday as well for the first time like ever <laughs> i might actually for like normal sieges play play a bit of maul so all of the defenders have spawned A, the majority of the attackers have spawned B. We'll see how quickly Pongard react and see if they rotate and if they do with how much of their team. Because obviously the attackers could just leave their units on the B side, run over to the A side to find and try doing a quick sally that way, but we shall. The defenders have got Zakali now, they've got Shenjis, they've got one Flamer, a couple of Iron Reapers, a couple of Palace Guards. I think they had like one or two cavalry out as well, so they've got a couple of units to quickly react to things. Winged Assars as well is one of them. Okay, I clicked on that already. Right, so it looks like they spawned at B. They've got um, a lot of their heroes just running over to the A side breach. They've got a couple of moles breaking down the gate straight off the bat, and they might have some guys climbing up the wall. So Matt and Bravo are climbing straight up. Bravo has Berserkers and Matt has Armigas. So Matt's probably going to jump straight off the wall as they, they see. So that was basically just to make Pongard rotate this way so they don't have a setup over here. The Breach is about to go down. The Breach is now down. That was Javelins doing their work. They're probably going to go back and get some more ammo. Pongard are rushing into position on the A side. B side gates down, there is no one on B though, so Bloodstory and Aaron are going to get on the B and start putting a little cheeky cap on already. I don't understand why they didn't go on and touch it at least, because they would have got a little bit of uh, got a little bit of uh, cap points off and it would have forced on guard to have to react. Possibly Matt might go in now and do it. Aaron and Bloodstory are obviously both still there, so they've got three heroes from Blame Elias on the B side. If they were going to do it, though, now they're starting to cap. Dealer for Life's coming back over. There's there's no real units for Blame Elias over there, but they've got three heroes to Pongard's two. And it looks like they're going to do a full rotate to B as well. Pongard have seen it, but I don't. they're not reacting that quickly. They've also got a lot shorter distance, so they don't have to be, like, spot on the ball. Trebuchet is going to hit a decent amount of units moving in that way, though. Unless they're really unlucky with the RNG. That's pretty unlucky with Aaron. There. A lot of heroes over here though for Blame Elias. Bongard have not sent enough to stop this. They're rotating over now, but they've left too much in the back here. I think Blame Elias' units are arriving now and they've got hero and unit advantage. Obviously, Sons of Fenrir from I think that's Gilcho. Or obviously in position on the point, but they're not going to survive that long against that many heroes. The flames from Blame Elias as well, cl absolutely clearing the blob here. Pushing in with their units now as well. Iron Reapers in the mix, Chenji Bombs going off. Looks like Blame Elias have got the advantage. Cavalry going this way to stop as well. Oof, Blood Story doing work there against Critical. A number of the defenders have dropped down now, they're only on 11. Iron Reapers moving in onto point to stop the cap. 
It looks like palace guards from the defenders moved in as well, but they're like individual units going in on their own. There's no actual full-on front line from the defenders. The attackers here have got a good block off as well. I think they killed mo they've killed most of the units of Pongard. Pongard have just got still a, uh, uh, quite a lot of heroes alive. Obviously, Bravo was just back here stopping these four getting new units out, which is massive. Still no actual cap going off on B just yet, but should... I should a should a scav just died. Decent Treb going down there. At least they're just his own units out, so they can't just push down here. Too nice jumping in now. He's not going to survive long with that many heroes on there, though. Cavalry charge. Actually, did work, man. With such a short run-up, cleared straight through the first line of defense. Broke open the deformation so that Critical and some of the other guys could move through. Well, I think Critical was actually the guy using the cavalry. Ah. But the cav that second cavalry wing, the Sar, man. Woo. Straight through the front lines there. That did a lot of work to clear it. Obviously, only six of the attackers alive. Blame Elise now putting pressure upon A, though. He got Asianism. Asianism just managed to get over there and stop them, though. Elise is still just running around. Lord Monka's pulling back. Blame Elias should pull back here. They've still got four minutes. Uh, they basically just have to touch B, then they've capped it. They all spawn in A. It's like they've just a massive wedge of the guys have just spawned A. I think what they're going to try and do is just force a fight over here and then just send somebody in to back cap B. I think that's what it looks like. Unit-wise, the attackers have done slightly better than the defenders so far, but it's like literally 20 units. It's not really nothing to talk about. Um, come on, game. 12 to 10 hero difference as well, so there's only two hero difference. Nothing massive happened in that region so far. Obviously, I'd say Blame Elias have got the advantage so far because they've actually managed to get almost a full cap off on B. Um they've touched A as well, so they've got they've done they've done a bit. They've done a bit already. So Mr. Tox going around with his Armagers. Yes. And he is gonna run over Palace Guards. There's no hero oh no takedown is there, so he will be at Brayson. So at least eventually just killed Mr. Billy D. The defenders have dropped a hero. Flames from the defenders though, but Bloodsaur has jumped on top of them. I think he may have just killed them as well. Mr. Tok ignored the palace guards and charged in from behind. Hero-wise, it's still very even. It seems to be... I think it's actually fairly even because there's a lot of red units here. Those winged stars are going to come in now though and do work from multiple directions. Pongard's use of Winged Assar so far has literally been doing work for him, man. Especially uh, mixed with, I think there's an IPG walk, or is that... That must be an IPG walk going off there as well. Pongard have stabilized massively there. Blame Elise have dropped a lot of heroes. They've still got a couple of guys on B just to be safe as well, because they know if it gets touched, it's basically gone. Both teams are dropping heroes now, though. 9 to 10. There's definitely more units for the... Defenders even on the point. They've got some Shenjus back here. Some attacking Ryan Reapers coming around now to get into the Javelins. Thank you for the follow, y y Yuki Shimoto. Much appreciated, my guy. Like three units of Winged Assars just running through everything. <laughs> very, very close. 1 minute 46. Oh, Deja Vu's got B, though. Deja Vu's got B. Good back cap there. Sakai's not going to be there on time. Oh, no, he is. He got his unit in. What did he do? Just... He must, they must have been sud right then. He just V'd him. Deja Vu's just been killed, I believe. Yes. Sekai managed to, uh, with his right click on the pike, managed to dismount him. And it looks like Deja Vu's probably going to die. Elias is jumping in there now as well, though. A couple of guys respawning on the B side. Guys running along the wall. They've got a minute to try and get in here. You also need to keep pressure upon A so that not everything can rotate to B and try taking B now. Unit-wise, it's 600 odd to 600 odd. There's Still only 20 unit difference in it. I think hero kills or deaths, if we'd look at it, would be very similar still as well. Blame Elise are getting a lot of stuff up on the B side though now. And they're keeping enough pressure on, on A to force Pongard to have to still defend A. But they're definitely getting work done on this B side. B is just being capped, so the C is wide open. They can push up there now and start putting pressure on the B side. Pongard have still got presence down on A. 2 minutes and 45, are they going to try and split defend A and C, or are they going to pull back from, from A now? I think you can see them um and ah and are we going to stay, are we going to go? Shields aren't the quickest units, so maybe they should just keep them here and stay. Um, are they pull, they pull back to end point. They're not, they're not going to defend, they're not going to defend C. 
problem is now that they took so long to do, like, to retreat down here, that all their units are getting ruined. Honestly, they shouldn't have even tried retreating those shields. They were so slow anyway. They should have just put them down in a circle formation on A and waited. They would have, they would have died, definitely, but they would have probably done more in formation than, than just getting absolutely ruined like they did there. So I'm going to check the hero dis uh, difference. 27, 27, so it's bang on. It says 27, 28 years, so somebody fell to their death. Uh, but it's very even. Unit-wise, 680 lost to 757. So Blame Elias have now got a slight advantage. Only 15 units in total, though. They do have complete tier 4, tier 5 units. Two guys without units. On guard have at least four without units. And like I've said numerous times so far... Um, the attackers have a huge advantage when hitting the base point on High Lungs Fjord. They still have five trebuchets and they have six minutes to get up here. The defenders do not have any specialists, so they have no flames up. It looks like they don't have Shenji's or Falconet's either, although Falconet has been banned. Apologies. Falconet's and Cataphracts has been banned, so I should up. But they don't have any specialists for the final push point. And Black Death, thank you very much for the follow as well, my guy. Treb coming in. Unlucky that that second one didn't hit. Unlucky that the third one didn't hit. And unlucky that the fourth and fifth ones also didn't hit. <laughs> Rough time. So, Pond Guard have got five players without units. Um, the attackers, Blame Lee, have got two sets of Javelins. And they also have a set of Shenjis up as well. Maybe the five dudes from Pond Guard should be looking for the specialist from Blame Elias and jumping on them. As soon as they know where they are, I think Pondgard are going to struggle to hold this. They're going to struggle to hold this. I think Blame Elias are just going to use all their trebs as well if they can. Move in, get one good push off, push them off the point, wipe it basically, and then, then they've won. They've got definitely the unit advantage because they've got a lot more. Even though it only says 15 difference, they've got a lot more players with units and they've got a lot more higher tier units. So this is going to be rough, man. Maximuff is really popular. You mean our deal for life? Yeah, deal for life's doing good, man. Right, here comes the push now. So they've still got three trebs. Obviously, make forcing an engagement here and trebbing. This is going to be huge. Uh, Fort Brachio coming from the side there, though, is going to be rough to deal with. It's that village watchman charge or something as well. Where's the Shenji bomb? Javelins up here doing work on this blob here as well. Ah, here's the Shenjis. They just cleared the, the, the shields out, I think. Yeah, look at that push going through, man. That is... Both teams have just dropped two heroes, though. The defenders have just dropped to 11, so dropped another four. Cavalry charge coming through from the attackers now. Winged Assaz plowing straight through. Um, the defenders have just dropped another hero, and they're now on, only on 10. They only have 61 units up as well, so they just got completely cleared there. It's GG. GG, blame Elias. Deal of life coming in from the back and instantly dying. <laughs> um, that was rough, man. That was rough. Definitely a more even fight than the last one, though. When you think it's only 200 units, it's only really this last engagement that went like massively in favour of Blame Elias, obviously because they still had a lot, lot more higher, uh, higher tiered units in the fight, and it's like hitting, defending this last point's always rough, man. It is always difficult. Right, so MVP this time for Blame Elias is Sol. He's got five heroes killed, one death and 12 assists with 116 units. Just out of interest, how many specialists did he get? He got 12 Shenjus and four flames. That is insane. Blame Elias, four flames, four Zakalian. Again, very well done on getting rid of specialist units. It's like the main thing you need to do on, in situations like this. You need to find the units that are going to CC like a big blob. Like Flames and Shenji is huge for it. So where Falconet is. And you need to jump on them as soon as you can and just get, get them off the field as quickly as possible so they can't they can't be a deciding factor. And like Sakai here, 17 Shenjis, man. That is a huge unit to kill. And that's like a unit in a bit as well. So GG to Sakai for, for, for doing that, man. Rough, rough, rough fight, man. That was glorious. Like, the, the, the wing to Sar charges from Pongard there kept them in that fight for so long on BNA. Like, just coming in at, like, perfect timing. And Flame Elias won the first engagement, if you like, when they first performed a B and got, like, a 80-90% cap off of B. Um, their 
baiting basically in rotation for the reason for that because they managed to get set up in the position like blocking the the bridge from a across obviously pongard had i think like four or five guys in the back that were like recoming back in that could hit them from behind close to down and then obviously with the the cross charges wings bars and stuff like this where they where they managed and there's a huge roll on b and obviously getting the b cap it just opened up the whole map and then uh pongard having to pull back honestly the only main mistake i saw in that fight was the the shield the, the shield guards they should have just got put in the circle formation on a and then the hero should that that a slow unit like that is never going to be able to pull back and as soon as people see them retreating and there's no hero there you just jump on them with a few heroes and you've got, you've got them killed easy. so rough times very very well played though blame elias so in on the discord they were the the team that got mainly voted for uh that that, that would win this matchup and they they proved that did the work got the job done so three points to blame elias gg guys toggle blame elias blue toggle pond guard red stand down yes my beautiful team. right well boys that those are the matches for this weekend absolutely glorious fight ggs all teams involved